the U.S. Secretary of State there, uh, Rex Tillerson. Uh, joining me from Washington is Andrew Wilder from the Asia Center at the U.S. Institute of Peace. He's been in charge of the Institute's Afghanistan program. It's good to see you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. I'm really interested in this focus that there seems to be on India and what India can do to try and um, uh, help America deal with the Afghanistan question. How much of a change do you believe this is from past administrations in bringing India into the fold in this area? Well, I think there is continuity um, in terms of what the overall objective is in Afghanistan in terms of wanting to prevent it from becoming a safe haven for transnational terrorist groups again. So I think that's constant. But there, we have seen some you know, changes in emphasis in the new Trump policy, in particular by not stating the time frame to withdraw troops or focusing so much on troop numbers, which I think is also positive because in the past, I think we focused so much on troop numbers that that sort of became the strategy rather than the tactic to support the overall objectives. But the other area which is different, as you noted, is I think more focus on having a regional approach um, uh, you know, to resolving the conflict, and I think that's positive. But, but I am personally puzzled a little bit by the emphasis on India, because on the one hand, we want Pakistan to be more cooperative, and yet the number one reason why Pakistan is interfering in Afghanistan and providing safe havens to the Taliban and the Haqqani network is because they want to ensure that that's an asset to guard their interests in Afghanistan against Indian, what they perceive to be Indian interference. So if you're basically asking India to do more in Afghanistan, if anything, you risk further fueling the yeah. concerns in Pakistan that Indian influence in their, in their uh, uh, you know, western border uh, mm. and the neighbor to the west is, you know, is going to you know, grow and further threaten Pakistan interests in Afghanistan. So again, trying to ask India to do more, I actually think can be counterproductive. But, but as you say, you point to one more of a regional a holistic approach, I suppose you could say, getting um, regional players more involved, and that obviously includes India. But if you get India and Pakistan around the table, which it seems to be what Rex Tillerson and, and uh, President Trump want to do in trying to sort out what's going on in Afghanistan, then perhaps Washington can say to, to Delhi, well, you stop meddling, um, Pakistan stop meddling, and everyone will be better off. Well, yeah, and I think that we should be having more focus on Indo-Pak conflict because ultimately the Indo-Pak tension, I think, is fueling a lot of the conflicts in the region and including in Afghanistan. Um, but I think that's that's where there, there's been some you know, difference, certainly an emphasis between President Trump's speech, which focused lots more on the military angle were there to kill terrorists. Um, and I think it was, you know, very helpful for Secretary Tillerson to emphasize that, no, we need a more of a diplomatic and a political approach as well. Because I think if there's one lesson from Afghanistan as well as Iraq is that sort of simply killing bad guys, um, you know, it doesn't win the war. And, you know, where I think that the real opportunity lies in Afghanistan is, you know, I'm actually encouraged that we're sending uh, a modest increase in terms of military support. But clearly, that's not going to be sufficient to defeat the Taliban. Uh, but it could be part of a stick to try to incentivize the Taliban to come to the negotiating table. But then we need to have a much more robust political strategy, including this regional piece, uh, to incentivize the Taliban to come to the table and get Afghanistan's neighbors to uh, play ball with that. Mm. And I think in particular, if we can be clear to Afghanistan's neighbors, not just Pakistan, that the U.S. is actually really interested in bringing peace and stability to Afghanistan so that we can then withdraw our troops, I think we might get more cooperation in the region. Yeah, I mean, Lyndon Johnson focused on the body count in Vietnam. George W. Bush focused on the body count in Iraq, and we know what happened there. But given that there seems to be a little bit of conflict between what Rex Tillerson is saying and what, George, uh, what um, President Trump is saying, Freudian slip there, um, who do we believe? Well, at this point, I'd like to think that they're complementary. Uh, okay. I think for the speech that President Trump needed to give yesterday, uh, including appealing to his base, or, already, as your, your feature before this mentioned, there was a bit of a U-turn from what he campaigned on. 
uh, to what he gave in his speech. And so first, I'm certainly someone here who's very happy he didn't follow his gut instincts of simply precipitously withdrawing from Afghanistan, because then, you know, we know that, you know, the result of that would probably be state collapse and a return to anarchy, which would be bad for Afghanistan as well as the region, as well as uh, the U.S. And so I, I'm glad he actually listened to his advisors and changed his policy on that. But then again, I'm, I'm hoping he will follow the advice of Secretary Killers, Tillerson and give a lot more attention to the need, attention to the need for a diplomatic and a political strategy to complement what I think will also be an important military strategy. Mm, I mean, are there really elements within the Taliban um, who can be spoken to, negotiated with, um, as Rex Tillerson and by extension the president seem to suggest? I think there are, um, but I also think that's a, you know, a proposition to be tested. Up until now, I don't think, frankly, in the last 16 years, the U.S. has ever seriously uh, suggested that we're interested in a peace deal, uh, politically negotiated end of the conflict. Sometimes we've paid lip service to it, but it's our military policy that's always dominated. Also, when your policy, as it was under the Obama administration, was is we want to withdraw by 2016. If you're the Taliban, why negotiate if, the, if your adversary is about to withdraw, uh, you know, pretty much all foreign troops from Afghanistan, wait till they're withdrawn and then try to win on the battlefield. The fact that the Trump administration is now signaling that we're not going to withdraw, and I think with, along with our NATO allies are going to remain engaged, that combined with a more robust regional strategy and I think some incentives for those Taliban who want to negotiate to come to the negotiating table, you know, I wouldn't rule it out as, a, as an impossibility. I mean, I think some of the Taliban themselves are tired of fighting after so many years. And as much as, you know, the Afghan national security forces and, uh, are taking a heavy toll, the Taliban are as well. So I do think that there's elements that would be interested in a politically negotiated end to the conflict. Okay. Andrew Wilder from the Asia Center at the U.S. Institute of Peace. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you.